Thank you. First, I would like to thank uh, the partners to make this uh, event uh, happen and also thank you guys for uh, making my presentation happen as well. Uh, it's my first DDD talk um, and let's get started. So my uh, presentation is about making unit tests simple again with .NET Core and EF Core. My main focus is going to be the EF Core part and a little bit more pragmatic approach to unit testing. So first, uh, I am Yane Kauka, but you can just call me JK. Uh, and I'm software architect at SSW. You can follow me on Twitter, on GitHub, uh, or on my blog, jk-dev.me. And lately, I'm focusing mostly on .NET Core and cognitive services. So why would you uh, do the effort doing the unit tests? So uh, you'll heard from a lot of people, they're saying like, it's not worth the effort, it takes too much time, or you know, they just don't feel like they have the skills to do the tests. Um, so for once, unit tests can serve as a live uh, documentation. And then it helps to prevent you over-engineer stuff because you have a clear goal what you're supposed to test and you don't try to do much more than what's needed for the test. In the future, it gets simpler to add features and refactor with confidence, especially on big projects where any change can break uh, your code. Helps prevent bugs, uh, especially the regression and the jury is out that it does actually speed up development, um, but it takes a little bit of time to learn properly use uh, unit tests, but once you go over that hurdle, it does speed up the development. So what I'm going to show you is a bit more pragmatic approach, uh, and the key takeaway will be that you should start doing unit tests. You should be afraid doing unit tests. And the quote here sums it up perfectly. An imperfect tests run frequently are much better than perfect tests that are never written at all. You can wonder why, uh, you can guess why that is. But this is now uh, the the basics of the unit tests I'm uh, going to cover, and we're going to move to a more technical part, which is the EF core. So how many of you have used unit tests in the past? Ah, quite a lot. And how many of you have used EF core? So not many. So what EF core is, is a lightweight, extensible, and cross-platform ORM. So you can basically access the database uh, quite uh, in an abstract way. Uh, EF Core has several providers that allows you to connect to SQL Server, Oracle, SQL Lite, or many more. And the very important part of the EF Core is that the DB context, the, the part that allows you to connect to those uh, providers, is not testable in EF Core. So the DB context now works as a unit of work, and the DB set inside of DB context works as a repository. And if you were in the previous session, uh, Jason was talking about a lot of points about uh, that you may not need to use repositories and unit of work in um, EF Core anymore, and uh, we have that recording, and I encourage you to check that one out. Uh, if you want to know more about uh, details of EF Core specifically. But what we're going to focus is two providers. And they're both used specifically for unit testing. One is in-memory non-relational provider. And the other one is the SQLite relational provider. They both used to be able to simplify unit testing because in a lot of cases, uh, our code depends on doing operation on the database, and sometimes abstracting that layer is very difficult. 
but it, uh, you shouldn't be using it to uh, try to mimic the database. You shouldn't be uh, checking for foreign keys and things like that. This is specifically used for making unit testing simpler. So for the first demo that I'm going to show you, I'll first show you the setup I have made, and then I'll show you the live demo. So what we uh, have set up here is the bare minimum for a persistence layer. So we have a simple class uh, library, which contains a person uh, data structure with first name, last name, and an ID, and a DB context. So here is the DB context. Uh, it has the bare minimum uh, configuration for a DB context, and we have a people's uh, uh, table. And here we have the, uh, the actual structure of the project. And as you can see here, uh, we have uh, only one dependency, and that's mic uh, Microsoft Entity Framework Core 2.1. So the next step is how do we create unit tests? So when you create a new unit test in a file new uh, project, you'll have uh, different templates like for X unit, N unit, uh, MS test. You just create a new project and all you need to add to be able to do EF core testing is the entity framework uh, test adapters, in this case, in-memory and SQLite adapters. The next phase is the actual test. So I'll go um, through this code. So first we have the builder. Uh, this builder is basically how we construct uh, the DB context. It's something that you might even use on the production code. Uh, via dependence injection, but here we're explicitly creating the, uh, the options builder. Then we, take, uh, we tell that builder to say, hey, we're using in-memory database, and we're using a random name because we want to ensure that the database is always unique, always empty. And after that, we create a context of sample uh, DB context, and we put those uh, options in. And the last part is just that simple test we wanted to test in the first place. And in this case, we're just testing whether we can add a person, save it to database, and then retrieve it back. So that's the in-memory provider. If we have a look at the SQLite provider, uh, the major difference is with tell the uh, options builder that it should use SQLite provider rather than uh, in-memory provider. And we say that the data source is memory. We don't have to generate uh, unique names for SQLite. And what's important is we need to open connection and ensure created. And if we compare them side by side, you can see that the, from the test perspective, it's everything the same. It's just the setup of the context that is different. So now if we move to the uh, first demo, I'd like to uh, show you something. So we can traditionally just select and run all our tests. We wait uh, for the project to build. We wait for a test to run, and then we see the results. What, what I'll show you is a better approach that will uh, hopefully help a lot of you to speed up uh, development. I think this is uh, the single best feature in Visual Studio 2017 for unit tests. What it allows you is to see not just the result of the unit test on the left side, but what I can do here is change, and I haven't saved yet, and it will tell me hey, this unit test failed. So I can code, and while I wait for the result, I can already think about the next step. And if you didn't believe me that we need to open connection, I can just comment out and you'll see that the test actually is going to fail. 
So you can, uh, have, you can really quickly iterate your code and see what's working, what's not working, and really focus on the actual problem rather than running and debugging. Uh, can you repeat the question? So it uses uh, the same uh, test adapter than uh, this uh, than the one in Test Explorer. Uh, so the question was, uh, uh, how it does it know uh, whether it's fail or not? It's because it uses the same uh, test adapter uh, than the Test Explorer. Does that answer, answer this question? Yeah, it runs in the background, yeah. So okay, that's all for the uh, first demo. So the second demo uh, will be slightly harder, but just slightly. And we're going to use Jason Taylor's uh, Northwind project, the same one as in the pre uh, previous session. How many of you were uh, in the previous session? Ah, that's great. So we don't need a long introduction. And what we're going to do is something very simple. We're going to update uh, change employee uh, manager command. And we're going to do an integration uh, test for a report query. So let's switch to the Northwind traders. Here I have, uh, for, just for those who are new, I'll just quickly show you. It's really slow. So what we're going to focus here is mostly the application layer and uh, application test layer, but we also have uh, already uh, prepared persistence and pre presentation layer. But um, I use this project so we can just dive directly into data and how to use this in a real application. And before we start with the test itself, uh, I have prepared a test base, which is inherited by all tests. Uh, and the main purpose for it is to generate the DB context. And the differences you have seen between the in-memory uh, provider and the SQLite provider is handled here. So if we use the SQL provider, we ensure the connection. Uh, otherwise, we just uh, make sure that the database is created. And we switch uh, through use SQLite. If you're interested in this code, uh, at the end of the presentation, I can uh, provide you the URL. And the last part before we start with the uh, actual test is the init and get. What it does is it creates the DB context, it seeds two uh, employees, and returns the context. So we have a little bit uh, of data to play around uh, with our test. And if we look at the first um, test, what we're trying to do is we're trying to uh, assign uh, a manager to an employee. And then we're trying to assert whether that change was successful. And what I can do now is I can use the live unit testing and I can start and exclude all but this test. So we can really focus uh, testing just this test. On the bottom here, we can see the progress and we can see uh, that the test has failed. And if we go into the method, you can see that uh, it has missing implementation. And if we just copy this around and paste it here. And just uh, imagine that we are actually doing coding right now. When I do this, I don't have to go back to the code to see, oh, this test now works. I can just do the code inside the command or query or anywhere where the, uh, which is being run by the test, and I can see the results as I type. 
Yes? If you have multiple tests on that one method, will you get the red exit if any of them fail, or does it show any degree of granularity? So remind me that at the end, and I can show, uh, show a demo of that. But yes, you see a red crosses for the field test and green. Um, I'll show it at the end, just remind me. Okay. So th that covers the very basic scenarios. But what happens is, okay, the testers comes to you and say, hey, you know that um, you cannot be a manager to yourself. I was like, oh, okay. And then uh, I've written, and also you, you have forgotten a case, uh, test case where a non-existing person cannot be a manager or you cannot assign it to a non-existent person. So I've written a new test which what it does is it's the same one as before, but we're trying to add a non-existing manager. When we try to run this test, uh, we'll find something very interesting. It will fail, but here we are going to see uh, where different providers come into play. Because the reason why this is failing is not because the actual command failed, but because the field didn't uh, fail at all. So for instance, if I copied this part, so run it over here and let's comment this out. It will be perfectly happy, but we don't have a manager of ID3. It doesn't exist. And this is one of the things you need to keep in mind when you're using in-memory a database. If we use, for instance, SQLite uh, provider, this, uh, this task is going to fail. So if we look at here, it fails correctly because there is no foreign key. And this is where you can see why I uh, like to use two different providers. In-memory provider I use because it's fast and SQLite because I can enforce those things. But as a proper unit test, you should never rely on the actual database. So you shouldn't be relying on the database telling you there's no foreign key. So instead of fixing that part uh, with help of database, uh, we're going to go into the command and I already prepared the next part. And we're going to paste this part here and we have yet again another uh, passing test. And this is uh, very important to know that you should always test how the application behaves, not a database. So ideally, if when I remove the SQLite it, uh, provider, it should work the same in, in memory. But sometimes you have complex updates and you actually need to verify whether there's any foreign key uh, conflicts. And the last one is very uh, easy. You cannot be manager to yourself. Now here we feel uh, not big because um, of the database, even if you use uh, uh, SQLite, we'll have exactly the same result. Uh, here we fail because this is a business requirement. So if we copy that. And one thing to note is if you look at uh, this line over here, you can see there's a uh, blue dash the main reason why I added this uh, case is that blue dash means that the code hasn't reached uh, there yet. So you can actually see how far the, uh, the code has gone based on what you see on the left. Because if I throw an exception over here, you'll see that the code executes all the way to the exception and everything is blue. So if sometimes you're asking yourself, oh, where does it uh, break? Where is that point uh, 
where we uh, get a, an exception, you can quickly uh, iterate through with the live unit test instead of spending a lot of time on uh, debugging the application and going uh, line by line. So once I uncomment this part, we have all tests green. And to verify that, I can just uh, make sure that when I do the live unit testing, I go to the class level, and now when I'm on class level, I can exclude everything but the entire class. So now I am doing a unit testing on the entire class. I switch back to the uh, command, and I can see that all lines are green. So, and for answering your question before, if, for instance, I make one test uh, fail that fails only on one specific line, if we switch back, you can see that everything is red. This line is blue, which should have been covered, but because I uh, broke the test, isn't covered. But the one that is always successful in all tests is green. So you can have a quick look at which parts are actually breaking and which parts, uh, parts are good. Let's put back to that. And the uh, last two demos is what sometimes happens is you need to do, uh, you need to run SQL statements. It might be because of the performance uh, reasons. It might be uh, the SQL is provided to you and you just have to use it. And you don't have to worry about that because uh, EF Core, uh, with help of a SQLite, uh, covers that. So if you run this test, uh, it's going to be successful, and if we look uh, what's going on, we are actually executing a SQL statement, and we're using the new uh, query async from EF Core to one to be able to, uh, to directly uh, translate a uh, SQL result into a model, uh, and what it gives us an additional uh, benefit is we can use where clause, uh, order by, and other link statements on top of that query. So you, you no longer have to do specific select statements or get all the results from the database and then uh, do the queries in memory. And just to prove the point, if I remove the SQLite provider, this is going to fail because in-memory provider does not support relational database. And something very interesting happened with EF Core 2.1 as well is it now supports views. Uh, in 2.0, uh, when you try to create a view with SQLite, there were some weird errors and you couldn't really use it. But with 2.1, to my surprise, it just works. Uh, the only caveat is that usually those views are created outside of your uh, DB context. So you, have, you usually will have to create them manually before starting the uh, unit test. So for instance, here I am actually creating the, uh, I'm executing the creation of the view before I start the query because that view only exists in the production databases. But otherwise, this is exactly the same test, and it, again, it works only on SQLite provider. So I hope with that, uh, I give you a little bit of glimpse how you can use um, the EF uh, uh, providers to more easily test um, your unit test, and hopefully also showed you um, that writing tests isn't really that hard. And those tests, for some, would be like, yeah, they're integration tests. They are not uh, strictly correct. And you should take the pragmatic approach. You can always mock certain layers, uh, layers 
a little bit later, you can refactor your code, make your test better, but if you can write a test that, uh, that tests the right thing, that captures the right bugs, you should do them now and make them better over time. And just to finish off the EF core part, um, you have seen that I was using in-memory uh, and SQLite uh, providers. Uh, and when would you want to choose which one? I would say always use in-memory provider unless you, uh, there's a reason not to, specifically because of speed. And the other one is the consistency of order. So when you do a select statement in, in memory, you'll get one order. In SQLite, you may get random orders each time you call. But in memory provider is a relational database. So forget about foreign key constraints and other features, but it will, EF Core is smart enough to be able uh, to do join tables and similar features. And it doesn't support uh, SQL statements. Now SQLite, as you have seen, does support uh, foreign key constraints and it can run SQLite uh, statements, but it can take up to five times uh, longer to execute uh, the statements. And as I said, inconsistent orders and although it's a relational database, Keep in mind, this is not a SQL Server. It does not have all the features, and when you're ex executing uh, raw SQL statements, they might not be the same as the SQL Server. So the key takeaway from this presentation would be keep it simple. The less dependency you have to the tests, the better. So, I did forgot to show you, and I do have a little bit of time uh, to just show you what I mean with that, with that. So we have here a test. You should not be a manager to yourself. What if I tell you that I can do this? I can just not use a context at all. And when I run the life unit test, it will run very happily. And if I completely remove uh, this part, it will run completely happy. And you should do that simply because the less dependency you have, the less chance the test fails because of something that is not relevant to this test. Make it snappy. Basically, you don't want slow unit tests because you want to run them uh, as many times uh, as possible, as frequently as possible. And if you have a global seed, that means that the time for the application to execute, uh, for the task to execute can increase. And if there are too many tests, depending on that one seed, you have an exponential growth in uh, test execution. And focus on what's important for the test. Uh, what happens sometimes is we try to over-engineer things or we try to test things that are not really important for the business. And sometimes we just need to pick the battles and focus on things that are important. So with that, um, uh, thank you. And if there are any questions or if you're more interested in more details between differences of EF Core uh, SQLite provider or in-memory provider or you're more interested uh, about unit testing in general, I have a few more demos I can go through. I think it's .NET Core, uh, EF Core 2.2 uh, for Cosmos support. What about data migration? Is it the same as for EF? Uh, uh, the question is uh, for uh, EF migrations. Uh, do you mean migrations in general? Database migrations. Yeah. Database migrations. 
Yes, they are uh, supported. Um, I can actually show you in this project. We do have uh, migrations over here. Uh, let's zoom in a little bit. So it, uh, the uh, EF migrations are very similar as before. Uh, they just don't use uh, binary um, files anymore when they do uh, divs. They use text uh, uh, snapshots, which is much better. Um, yeah, and they just work as before. But in 2.1, they did, did add uh, data seed migrations, which is new to uh, EF core. So you can specify uh, specific seeds for the table. Any other questions? No, yes? Uh, I haven't done specific uh, performance tests, but with EF Core 2.1, the need for DAPA has drastically reduced. Uh, specifically because uh, the query async, uh, but I haven't done performance tests. So, in short, I used to depend on Dapper in 2.0 uh, for SQLite um, when it comes to GUID conversion type and some SQL execution, but now I'm just using uh, EF Core. Any other questions? Uh, sorry, can you repeat? Using Redis? Redis? Uh, Redis? Uh, if we use uh, reactive extensions, no, but I think Brendan did something regarding. <laughs> Perfect. You can just go to his talk. <laughs> So for store procedures, uh, based on my understanding, um, they're not directly supported um, the last time I checked, but you can execute the SQL statements that execute store procs and then do the mappings. a string query with EF and just execute that, um, whether that's the right, that's a different question, whether it's the right thing to do. <laughs> yeah, but not right, but that's why I have basically had it in both. I yeah. have both, so, so. Can you yeah. find the proc in EF, of course? But we have another question over there. Uh, can um, I know you like covered the, the biggest logic and stuff with the EF core. Are there like tablets that can be excluded from the test coverage? Uh, can you uh, repeat the question, uh, please? Uh, so are there any like, a snippet or classes that can be ex excluded from the testing? So the question is if we can exclude certain classes from the unit test. Have, like, a or test so when you're using the in-memory and SQLite providers, the migration is not being run. So it just takes the current domain, whatever you set up, and just takes that. It doesn't look into the migration. So even if you put, for instance, a view into a migration step, it won't be available to the test. I think he was asking whether in, in the normal run of things, if certain code can be excluded from the test coverage. Yeah. Um, it just be a statistics, you want to oh, see that. Yeah. 80% coverage, but that's because 20% of it is migration code or something like that. Yeah, I want to like aiming at, at put the oh. storage. Ah. Are there any snippets you normally exclude it? Ah, so the question, the real question is when you have a uh, coverage, uh, code coverage tool, whether you can exclude, for instance, migrations from or that coverage. Code. Yeah. I believe that's, that's very specific to the tool you're using, and there are many tools here, uh, uh, out there for uh, code coverage. So, yeah, you'll probably have to look for that specifically. 
Yeah, for speci yeah. specifically, there is, I don't have the internet right here, but when you have, um, I believe it's category or test category or something like that. Uh, I don't remember exactly how it's called, uh, category is an X unit. You can actually specify a specific uh, category that got, uh, gets removed from the live unit testing and by extension the uh, code coverage by live unit testing. And I believe there's another one that also is uh, for uh, excluding to the code coverage in general or at least the Microsoft uh, code coverage. I believe it's straight. Yeah, you can set up the trait. But I don't remember uh, precisely what, uh, what's the name of that, um, that category. Uh, category, uh, can, uh, category, yeah. Yes, um, so if you're interested, I can show you a little bit why you don't uh, want to use SQLite all the time. Just to prove your point, I'll just quickly do. This was really fun when I discovered. I'll be running two tests side by side. And they both are for performance tests. One is in memory and where are you? Performance. This one. Ah, uh, yeah. So this, uh, this project is specifically designed to uh, give you a little bit more side-by-side -side comparison. Uh, and it's nicely des described in my blog post while this is executing. I can quickly show you. The you can actually have a YouTube. Unfortunately, it doesn't work here, but uh, you can have a look into the YouTube. I am actually going through each uh, difference between in-memory and if core providers. And if you're more interested, you can just look into uh, this YouTube. It's a little bit more in-depth. Uh, it is currently for EF Core 2.0, so it not, it's not quite uh, uh, up to date. But I think if you're very interested into that, definitely have a look into that. Also, you have the, uh, all the samples here and you also have um, the updated URL uh, down below uh, for the actual source code for this specific presentation. And I'll be making another blog post specifically for this content. So if you go back, you can see that uh, in-memory provider took seven seconds and uh, SQLite uh, took 19 seconds. So with that, um, I think if there are no other questions, uh, thank you for uh, listening and... <laughs>